Parts Express. Anybody who knows audio, especially DIY audio, has heard of Parts Express. Been around since 1986. Today we're going to look at a plate amplifier from Dayton Audio. So let's go to the website here and do a search for plate amplifiers. We'll scroll down and go to page 2, search high to low. We're going to pick out this SPA-1000, which is a 1000 watt subwoofer amplifier class ab from dayton audio sold exclusively at parts express this is not a sponsored video by any means i purchased this amp myself to give it a test and possibly use it in a future uh, project so let's open up the box here and see it's nicely packed the subwoofer amp is inside of a foam enclosure very nicely packed up for safety and it's also enclosed kind of in a plastic container you can see here Let's take a closer look at the controls on the amp. You can see on the left side we have the gain control on the far left, and we have the low-pass filter from 30 to 200 hertz. We have a power LED. We have a phase switch from normal to reverse. So it's not a variable phase, but it does give you two different options. 0 or 180 is what they call that. In the center we have the parametric EQ, and it has three different dials for frequency, bandwidth, and level. Please notice if, if you set the level all the way down, then it's minus 14, so you might want to set that to zero. Also, RCA inputs for left and right and LFE for a low frequency effect. Here is the description of the parametric equalizer and how it works. You probably want to understand this about understanding the Q for the bandwidth and also the level and setting the frequency on whatever frequency you'd like. This is very useful. A lot of times we say, Base EQs, you know, aren't any good, but ones like this that have a lot of control are nice, and we do appreciate this kind of control. At the bottom of the amp, you'll see a fuse, you'll see the AC power input, and the power switch. If you flip the switch to on, it's an auto sensing. It'll turn on when it needs to, which is what we kind of recommend, and you'll see why here in a few minutes. As I mentioned earlier, the back of the amp is kind of covered up in a plastic enclosure. It also has the 12 gauge speaker leads coming out of the back. So you can connect those up to your speaker. And it also has a very beefy eight foot power cord for 110, 120 volt AC for connecting it to the wall. Now the amp is rated 497 watts at eight ohms or 950 watts into four ohms based on one third duty cycle, whatever the heck that means. Now next up, we're gonna get it connected up to the amplifier dyno and try the RMS power output measurements. We've already seen what Dayton says the amp will do, 497 at eight ohms, 950 at four ohms, but we're gonna try it out on our amp dyno, find out how it works. Now let's turn the amp on. You can see the green LED light there. First up, we're gonna try the eight ohm measurement. And the first test, as always, is a certified test, which takes us up to 1% total harmonic distortion. You can see 637 watts, so it easily beat the 497 that it's rated up to 1% THD. Next test is up to clipping 682 watts. And again, you can um, just ignore the voltage on the side because there is a voltage adapter used for this whenever we test home amps. 709 watts dynamically at 8 ohms. Next up, we'll try 4 ohms. The amp is rated 950 watts. And the certified test, up to 1% THD. Yeah, we don't quite get there. 877 up to 1% distortion. Now, the uncertified test takes us up to the clipping point, And we did get that rating and more, 1,114 watts. So that's a pretty good number up to clipping. Dynamic shows here the dynamic capability of the amp. It does a 40 hertz burst tone into the amp and you can see over 1200 watts, 1253, very nice. So overall here are the measurements we got, 637 at eight ohms, 877 at four ohms up to 1% THD. You can see the other numbers as well if you like to pause it. Next up, we're going to take the amp, take the plastic panel off the back so you guys can see how this amp is built. This is a class AB amp, so it's going to have a large transformer. Let's lift the back up. You can see there are three separate boards here. We'll get to that in just a second. The massive transformer here at the back is what 
accounts for most of the weight of this unit. So you can see the power supply on the far left side it includes its own board as well as a transformer. The middle board is the output for the speakers. It's got all the amplification circuit and the first on the right is the input board for the RCAs. It also has parametric EQ, the crossover, all that built in to that board. So it's kind of cool that it has three different boards. So if there's any problems, you can probably just swap it out and swap the one that's bad out. So I've not seen a lot of the home plate amplifiers like this, but this could be how a lot of them are made, especially the class AB ones that need the huge transformer like this. Um, the class D amps you'll see will have a smaller transformer because they use higher frequency for the switching and just how the architecture works for class AB versus class D is different. Now I did notice the amp has a horrible turn on and turn off thump. Let's check that out. Now that was a turn on thump, which is pretty brutal to the speaker, but it also has a turn off thump, which you can see here. All right, next up, we're going to do some demos with some bass music and we'll also measure wattage on some of these tests. So check it out. Here we go. now let's talk about the things we like about the amp it does have a parametric eq we like the class ab design it has an lfe input which bypasses the crossover circuit it has good dynamic power as noticed in the four ohm test and the amp is 120 or 240 volt capable so you can use it in different parts of the world now what could be better the power output at four ohms could reach that 950 that it was rated the turn off turn on thump is not good for your speakers to so leave the amp on. Doesn't have balanced inputs. EQ settings are kind of tricky. You have to be careful with those and it would be nice to have a variable phase control. So overall, I like the amp. It performed pretty well on the dyno, just didn't quite meet its rated powers at four ohms. Otherwise it did good, had good dynamic power. I would say be careful with that parametric EQ. Make sure you play around with those settings a little bit to get it sounding correctly with your speaker system because it can drastically affect the sound based on how those knobs are turned. So make sure you check that out. Thanks as always for watching my video. Special thanks to Stuart, Travis, Jesus, Tomcat Jr. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. All right, I figured you guys were gonna ask for some lower ohm testing of the amp. It's only rated down to four ohms, but we did try 2.67 dynamic and the amp actually went into protect on and off. So I would not recommend using this amp under four ohms.